Today I'm going to be taking a look at the recently released Deepin 20.8. And Deepin has always been one of my favorite desktop Linux distributions because it's very modern, it's really attractive, it has its own custom desktop environment called the Deepin Desktop Environment or DDE, it has its own custom suite of applications, and it's just a really well polished, well put together Linux distribution. It has a, a company behind it. It has a large following, a large user base. It's uh, based out of China, is the country of origin. This particular distribution, Deepin, is based on Debian. When this project got started uh, several years back, originally they based off of Ubuntu, but I think around uh, 2015 or so, they switched from basing off of Ubuntu to Debian. And it's always, again, been one of the distributions I've always really enjoyed every time I've played with it. I have installed Deepin on physical hardware for friends and family. You know, sometimes they'll bring me a computer, especially if it's a computer that has pretty good specs. I'll throw Deepin on it. And the reason it needs good specs is because Deepin, with a lot of the uh, graphics, uh, fancy animations and blurring effects, and it looks really good, but it does require a, a decent computer. It doesn't have to be anything just remarkable, but you probably don't want to install Deepin on your potato laptop. So I've downloaded the ISO for Deepin 20.8 and I'm going to go ahead and run through a quick installation inside a virtual machine. Do know that when you install Deepin inside a virtual machine, the installer for Deepin is their own installation program, their own installer, and it requires that you have at least 64 gigs of disk space on a system before the installer will actually let you proceed through the installation. Now it doesn't really install 64 gigs of stuff when you run through the Deepin installer. It installs far, far less than 64 gigs but you do have to create a drive of 64 gigs or better in a VM for the installation to actually work so just know that so let's go ahead and launch into our live environment which should launch us directly into the installation program and we're launched immediately into the installation program so this installer is rather simple to use it's not very complicated it's not the Ubuntu Ubiquiti installer, it's not the Calamares installer, it's the own custom installer, but I find it rather simple to use. At first, you have to select a language. By default, it defaults to Chinese, but of course, I need English, so I'm going to choose English. Let me move my head out of the way, because I have read and agreed to the end user license agreement and their privacy policy. You have to tick that on, so there is a EULA, um, so just be aware of that. I know, well, especially those of us in the free and open source software community, we kind of fear uh, end user license agreements, EULAs, but I'm going to tick it on and I'm going to click next. And then we get a friendly note letting us know we're installing this inside a virtual machine and virtual machines, the performance may be suboptimal. And this is important. If you're doing this in a virtual machine, make sure you select a good video driver. In my virtual machines, I typically use the Vert IO graphics driver that typically gives me the best performance in these situations and even then you may want to go ahead once you install deep and turn off all the fancy blurring and animations just to speed things up a little bit in your virtual machine so again we've read the friendly note let's click next now the disk i'm going to do full disk and i'm going to select slash dev slash vda it's the only disk here on the system so i've got that and you can see the partition scheme it's going to create. And this is really why it needs 64 gigs of space at a minimum is because it does this fancy uh, partition scheme. You can see it's going to create slash boot slash data, the root partition slash recoveries, uh, root B, and then a swap partition as well. So all of that I'm just going to leave as is. I'm going to do encrypt this disk just to see if encryption works. And then I'm going to click next. And then you can see encrypt this disk. We need to create an encryption password. So I'm going to create a strong and complicated password for the disk encryption and then repeat the strong and complicated password and then I'm going to confirm and this is a really neat portion of the installer ready to install make a backup of your important data so there's nothing to back up here this was just a, a fresh VM I just created there's no data to back up but if you wanted to you can see it's ticked on by default create a backup for system restore but this will increase the time so it'll you know increase the installation time I'm going to tick that off for purposes of this VM there's no reason for me to do that inside the VM then I'm going to click next and it looks like it's partitioning the drive and now it's decompressing the files. So now it's actually running through the installation. I'm going to pause the recording. Uh, this portion of the installer typically takes about five to 10 minutes on my machine. And the installation has completed. That took about five minutes or so. And now we click the button that says reboot. Now that's what I'm going to do. 
And now we come to this screen with the little lock uh, icon here. And what this is, of course, the disk is encrypted, right? So we have to enter our encryption password. So hopefully we remember that strong and complicated password. So we log directly into an installation program again, but it's different now. We've got different options to go through. So we've already installed everything. This is just some of the post installation setup we've got to run through. So it defaults to English because we chose English before. So that's nice that it remembers that. It also defaults to, I've, I've already read the end user license agreement, so I don't have to do all of that again. So I'm just going to click next. Keyboard layout English US has been chosen for me. That is correct. I'm just going to click next. Select a time zone. Let's see if I can just click somewhere in the US. Chicago. Chicago is in the central US time zone. That is where I'm at. Uh, not in Chicago, but in the central time zone so I'm just going to click next on that create an account so I'm going to call my user DT now the host name for the computer it defaults to DT-PC I'm going to change that to DT-Vert just so I know this is a virtual machine if I ever SSH into it or something and then let's create a strong and complicated password for the DT user and then repeat the strong and complicated password and now let's go ahead and click next and it says our username must be between 3 and 32 characters. So DT is not a good username. So I'll do Derek in this case. And now it allows me to continue. It says tuning the system. Please wait. All right. And we come to our uh, login manager, our login prompt here. So let's go ahead and enter uh, Derek's strong and complicated password. And then a friendly reminder, we're in a virtual machine, you know, performance may not be that great, yada, yada, yada. So do we want the effects mode with the fancy blurring and animations, or do we want normal mode? I'm going to choose the effects mode with all the fancy effects just to see if it works uh, with the graphics drivers here in the VM. If for some reason it's a little flaky or buggy, I'll come back and do normal mode, turning off all the animations. But let's try it with all the fancy effects at first. All right, and we're in our desktop environment. We get a little uh, welcome screen here. Before I go through anything else, though, I'm going to go into the file system here or in the menu system here. I'm going to search for display because we need a different resolution. Let's see. Resolution? No. How about monitors? Uh, how do I change? I don't know. System. How about settings? I don't know what I'm searching for here, but there's got to be a way for me there is the settings uh, control center is what they call it. <laughs> uh, so we do have to go into the control center, into display, and the resolution defaults to 1280 by 800, but really I want a more appropriate 1920 by 1080, and then save that, and this virtual machine should remember that I always want to be 1920 by 1080. And out of the box, you can see why I love Deepin as far as for aesthetics and just the uh, attractiveness of it. Beautiful wallpaper, right? I Beautiful uh, panel at the bottom uh, with a little uh, blurring effect. It almost looks like a kind of like a, a glass effect going on. You can see the menu system. Uh, right now we're using a light theme, but you can see it's got some... Uh, Gaussian blurring going on, right? So you, it, it's like the uh, picture kind of comes through, but not quite. It's really a, a, a very nice effect. Let me go ahead and click next on the welcome screen here. And of course, do we want to do fashion mode or efficient mode? Fashion mode is what we're in by default. It's the panel at the bottom, but it's not butted up against the bottom of the screen, right? You got some padding, you got the rounded corners, and that is a fresh modern kind of look, but I gotta admit, I'm an old school, traditional kind of person. I want efficient mode, which is the panel, <laughs> no padding around it, because honestly, that padding around it is just kind of wasted space. Make the whole thing 100% wide and put it right up against the bottom of the screen. That's what I like. So I'm going to click next. Once again, it's asking us, do we want effects mode with the blurring and animations and everything? Uh, or do we want normal mode, turning all of that stuff off? I'm going to leave the effects on for now. Choose an icon theme. By default, it defaults to Bloom. Uh, I guess there's some other options we could choose. I'm just going to go with the default icon set for now. I'm going to click Done. Reading the release announcement for Deepin 20.8, uh, they, they're really touting a program of theirs called Deepin Home. I'm assuming this is some kind of a, like a welcome application or a help application. Let's see what it is. 
Uh, it is a very attractive looking application. It almost is like a software center, but it's not really for software, right? You've got uh, communication. So I'm assuming clicking here would get us to uh, a web form or IRC chat or something to communicate with the Deepin development team. You got uh, ways to file bug reports, uh, suggestions, which is coming. Both the bug report and suggestions are not active just yet. You got links to questionnaires, to their wiki, to their GitHub. Get internal testing, community news. So this is a, a really nice kind of idea. Uh, this is not something you see in most Linux applications. Most of them have some kind of welcome application to get you some documentation and some help information. But I really like the way they've done this here. And they're trying to make it a lot more easy, especially being able to quickly just click on a bug report button and away you go. So that's going to be really nice once they get that up and running. Let me click on communication just to see what happens. I'm assuming a browser will open. Yeah, the Deepin browser, it's their own custom browser, right? And it opens to, yeah, so they've got some kind of a web form here where you can uh, communicate with the, the Deepin team. So that's nice if you need to get support. Let me close out the home application. Another application they've spent some time working on was their app store, which their app store has always been really nice, attractive application uh, store, a software center, if you will. And now they've really uh, put some time working on some of the finer details as far as like progress bars when things are installing and updating and things like that. But you can see it's a very attractive little application. Let's go ahead and try to install something just to see how this works. I don't know if HTOP is installed and deepened out of the box, but let's search for it. So you get the loading animation here. And HTOP is not installed because you can see we have an install button. If it was installed, we'd have a remove button. Let's click install. Oh, and we didn't even have to use our sudo password, right? Typically to install and remove software, you have to use sudo. That's what you would have to do at the terminal. But I guess with the uh, graphical software center here, they've removed the need to actually invoke sudo for this. So that's actually kind of a nice touch. I don't mind that actually. And you can see we get a notification saying HTOP was installed and they even put a desktop icon for HTOP. <laughs> so uh, that is, especially for Windows users, that's a really nice touch. Now for me, I don't like icons on the desktop, so I just, you know, highlight them and hit the delete key to get rid of those desktop icons. HTOP's still installed, right? <laughs> if I go through the menu system, I could search for HTOP. It is there. I just don't want the icons on the desktop. So yeah, I really like that App Store. Just quickly taking a look at some of their other custom applications, their file manager. It's actually a pretty nice file manager. I really like the disk section where you can see how much uh, disk space you're taking up on various partitions. You can see I've got a DVD drive attached to this virtual machine. And of course, with the icon set, which again, the Bloom icon set, I believe is what they're calling this default icon set is really nice. Let me right click. Uh, can I display... Uh, hidden icons. I probably have to go in some kind of settings menu here. I do like the list look. Ah, so you've got this side panel that'll open up. What is that? Details for? Yeah, I, I, this is really, really cool. I was looking for a way to show hidden files. I know the key binding to hit uh, in most file managers is control H. So if I do control H, it'll show hidden files. I thought there'd be a graphical way to turn that on. I'm sure there is. I just, um, uh, Probably settings here. Yeah, settings. Let me go into settings, hidden files. Yeah, there, so there's the graphical way to go about that. So I'm going to go back into the settings and I'm going to go to theme and it says system theme. So whatever the system theme is, is what it should default to. Let me leave file manager open. I'm going to go into the control center and see if this works. This was a little flaky before as far as applications respecting the theming so uh where is the theming is it under display display uh personalization is what i should use all right and then we have light auto and dark now i prefer dark so yeah <laughs> and the uh, file manager respects that accent colors it defaults to this blue accent color which is fine and we've got that green wallpaper though probably better with like a green accent that's a little too bright maybe tone it down just a little bit yeah, that's not bad. Or, you know, maybe something like a orange accent. <laughs> that actually works really nicely, too. I'm going to go back to this light green color there. So, yeah, uh, let's see if all of the uh, custom Deepin apps respect the dark theme. Would the browser also be dark? Yeah, we get a dark panel here at the top. By the way, let's see what the browser is. 
If I go to About Browser, you can see it's a, it's a Chromium-based browser. It's, this is version 6.0.24, and the name of the browser, oddly enough, is called Browser. So <laughs> this always kind of confuses me, the generic names. I, I don't like it when GNOME does their applications with generic names, and Deepin does the same things with their applications, just calling their web browser Browser. Kind of an odd choice, right? But hey, I understand they're trying to dumb it down for the masses, you know, because not everybody's going to know, you know, like Firefox is a browser or, you know, LibreWolf is a browser, whatever it happens to be, right? Just calling your browser browser makes it obvious, especially for the really new user. Hey, that's the browser. Some other applications they have pinned to the taskbar here is Album, which of course is your uh, photo manager here. I don't have any photos in this virtual machine to take a look at. We do have a music player. The music player is really almost iTunes-like. I don't have any music here as well to actually uh, do anything with, but we do have a nice little audio player if you want to play around with it on physical hardware where you've got something to actually listen to. They have a calendar application, which is pretty st straightforward. You know, not much to see here. It's like any other kind of calendar application. You can search your events, you know, so you've got uh, events and you can sort them with work, life, or, you know, any other category that you want to create here. And I just noticed opening some of these applications, some of them, when I closed them, they didn't actually close. They were minimized to the system tray over here. For example, I still have the music application open. So it just minimizes it to the tray here and just clicking on it unminimizes it, minimizes it again. So that's kind of cool. So to actually quit out of it altogether, um, probably need to quit exit okay and now yeah it's no longer in the sys tray so just be aware of that so you don't have some applications running that you really don't want running for example this uh home screen right the deep and home program didn't actually kill itself when i closed out of it right it just minimized to the sys tray so let me actually exit out of home by the way this program does not look like it respects the dark theme so uh, that's something to be aware of I'm, I'm it's a brand new program though there's a lot of work that deepen still has to do on that home application now let me go into the menu system here and uh, before I go into the menu system actually let me right click on the menu system because you can change the mode from fashion mode to efficient mode if you want to by right clicking on the menu you can also change the location so if you wanted the top panel you know you could move it to the top for me though I actually much prefer my panels to be on the bottom. I right click on the launcher again, status, keep shown, keep hidden, or smart hide. Smart hide is nice if you want your full screen applications to push the, the panel out of the way. So if I do smart hide and I do a browser, which should open full screen, you see the panel goes away. But it comes back when I put the cursor down there. That is actually a really nice effect. So let me go into the menu system here and we've got this button here. So this is like a maximize button for your menu system. What does that do? Well, it toggles on your standard like full screen dashboard like you would get in something like uh, GNOME, for example, or the old Unity desktop or even KDE Plasma has these fancy full screen menus now if you want to use them. So you have this as an option or if you uh, unmaximize, you get the traditional kind of menu system. I prefer the traditional menu system. Again, I'm more of a traditionalist. Uh, can you separate by categories? So we have a computer here and then we have documents. So this is actually your file manager, quick launchers. So that is actually kind of nice. So you can quickly access certain uh, file manager bookmarks right here from the menu system as well. So if I go into all categories here and you can see now we get it broken down by category. So the first screen, I guess it's like favorite applications or pinned applications. We have an internet category. We've already seen the browser. There's also a mail program, which is called mail. That's all it's called. And then of course our uh, downloader, or I guess a download manager. And then you have to click back to go back. The music application is the only thing in the music category. So there's not too much here. It's mainly just the custom Deepin applications and not much else. There's a movie program here. Let's launch that. Looks like a standard movie player, right? This is Deepin Movie 5.10.17, and it does respect the uh, dark theme that we set. Going back into the categories under graphics, we have our image viewer, our photo manager we've already seen. They also install Simple Scan, which is a scanning utility. That's not something most people these days have a need for. I actually still have a printer with a scanner, so uh, I actually do install Simple Scan on all of my installations. So it, that's a, a nice touch for those that still need it. There's a games category that has just a couple of games here. 
And then Office, we have the LibreOffice suite. We have Base, Calc, Impress, Math, and Writer. We also have our plain text editor. Let's see what they're using here. So if I go to About, this is Deepin, text editor 5.10.39. I really haven't played with their plain text editor much, but I'm sure it's like any other plain text editor. One other thing I want to look at in the menu system is let me go to the system category and we've seen the file manager in the app store. There is uh, the terminal, but I wasn't looking for their terminal. Well, we should take a look at the terminal because this is the deep in terminal and it's actually pretty nice. I have played with, around with this in the past. It's a very full featured terminal emulator and you can customize it as far as the theming and you know, the looks and everything. It's got tabbing you can see you can get tabs as well really nice terminal emulator but what i was looking for under the system category was their system monitor so this would be their graphical system monitor which again like everything with deepens custom suite of applications it's really attractive it's really a gorgeous program right now the cpu usage is quite high we're using about nine percent seventeen percent it fluctuates between about ten and twenty percent that's a lot of CPU. Again, we're, we have the fancy animations and blurring and everything going on. So, you know, you get uh, cool animations when you minimize and maximize and all of that. So that does suck up some CPU, the blurring especially. That fancy Gaussian blurring that's going on, uh, that is really a CPU intensive kind of thing. That's why a lot of desktop environments don't do that. And again, it's one of the reasons why you wouldn't want to install Deepin, again, on a potato machine. You know, you want something recently made, right? Something made, I'd say, in the last uh, five or six years should run Deepin just fine. As far as RAM usage, I gave this VM six gigs of RAM. It's using 1.6 gigs of RAM. Now, that might be a little heavier than normal because of uh, some of the programs I've opened up. I've probably got some background processes still running. I probably should actually run HTOP. To check some of this it says htop command not found well i installed htop and it's right there yeah when i run htop from the menu system it actually runs it just fine and you can see when i run htop i get a different amount of ram i get 1.3 gigs instead of 1.6 gigs that's what i expected because the graphical system monitor also sucks up a little bit of ram so for your your best readings just use a terminal program like htop to actually check the memory usage now I close the terminal. I want to check, does Control-Alt-T bring up a terminal? Because that's a key binding I expect on most Linux distributions to actually work. It does. So Control-Alt-T does bring up a terminal. Let's see if I can zoom in. So yes, uh, Control-Plus um, zooms in. Control-Minus would zoom back out. What I want to do is I want to do a uname-r. Let's check the kernel version. This is 5.15.77. One other thing I would like to do is I'm going to do an apt list dash dash installed i believe is the command to get a list of everything installed via the apt package manager now i'm going to up arrow and i'm going to pipe that output into wc the word count program space dash l for a line count because i want a line count not a word count 1775 lines were in that output meaning there was 1775 packages installed via the apt package manager one thing to know with deepin is uh snap is not here if i do where is snap d you can see it's not installed if i do uh, where is flat pack Flatpak also is not installed. And I know in past versions of Deepin, there were some issues with both snaps and flat packs. Uh, sometimes uh, you could run into some bugs trying to use those particular package formats. I believe they've I've worked out some of the bugs with Flatpak. It should work these days. And I believe snaps work as well, although I haven't tested it myself. Of course, one way around all of that is to use app images, which app images should work on pretty much any GNU slash Linux distribution. Now I'm going to right click on the desktop. I'm going to go to wallpapers and screensavers because we get this almost mobile phone like wallpaper switcher, which is kind of a neat idea. And the wallpapers for Deepin are gorgeous. Most of these I've seen before. I've seen that one in a previous version of Deepin. I've seen that one. I've seen, yeah, most of these have been around the block a few times with Deepin. I'm just going to go back to the default wallpaper, which I think is rather nice. So that's just a quick look at the recently released Deepin 20.8, a really fantastic distribution that has been around for a number of years, and every time I take a look at it, it gets better. And they really put a lot of work in on this. If I 
I'm going to link to the release announcement for this. You can see they put a lot of work as far as bug fixes on a lot of applications and things. So again, it's a, a good distribution. I think it's one of the best distributions to put in front of people that are not familiar with Linux, especially like Windows users, Mac users. You know, they're, they're wondering why they should switch to something like Linux. Uh, Linux, that's isn't that a server operating system? You can't possibly use it on the desktop. Is it going to look good, right? Well, show them Deepin. And when they see Deepin, they're not going to want to run Windows or Mac anymore. They're going to want to run this. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe, James, Matt, Maxim, Mimit, Mitchell, Paul, Wes, Wanya, Ball, Homie, Alex, Armor, Dragon, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Diokai, George Lee, Marstrom, Nader, Yon, Alexander, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Polytech, Reality, for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Steven, Tools, Devler, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tier patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This episode you just watched would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to support me, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace. But DT, it's Chinese. You can't trust it. It's free and open source software, guys.